Well, hello everyone, my name is Wigo and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I've done an actual new Pokemon ROM hack challenge. So today we'll be jumping into Pokemon Team Rocket Edition. And we will be seeing if we can beat the game with only stolen Pokemon, because in this game you have the ability to steal a Pokemon from each trainer you defeat. So this is definitely going to be possible, but I really wanted to do a sort of review video because this is one of the best ROM hacks that I've ever played. I think it might actually be my favorite ROM hack ever created and I've played a bunch of ROM hacks in my free time. So you basically work as a Team Rocket member working for Giovanni and his admins. You have to work your way around Kanto doing all of these missions for Giovanni. And you basically play through the entire Fire Red storyline, but in the shoes of a bad guy. So there's no defeating gyms or anything like that, it's just working for Giovanni and doing his missions. But there are a lot of twists and turns into this storyline, so I'm going to be talking a lot about the story in this video, because it's so good. The rules are simple, like always no items in battle, and I can only use the stolen Pokemon in battle as well. So as always people, don't forget to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications if you haven't done that already. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Team Rocket Edition. So normally in Pokemon games you get greeted by Professor Oak, but in this game it's one of the Team Rocket admins, it's Petrol. He explains a little bit about the organization and then you get to pick your name. And we'll be going with Don Gio in this run because we're going to be naming all of our Pokemon kind of Italian, like Mr. Giovanni himself. So you start off the game in the Team Rocket hideout down at the spinning tiles and you get to choose your starter. Well, not really choose, you have to check a box and in the box there will be a Rattata as your starter Pokemon. So since we didn't really steal this Rattata, we will just be using it to get our first stolen Pokemon and that will be our actual starter. Then we head upstairs to get ourselves the HM for Fly of one of the aids because you don't need any gym badges to use HMs in this game. You then meet up with Ronnie, he's also a new recruit in Team Rocket and he's going to be your best friend throughout this entire challenge basically. So you two will be going on missions together and having loads and loads of fun. And the first mission you do with him is steal a Pokemon. So you head upstairs and there is a little girl walking around a fountain and he's like yes this is the perfect opportunity for you to steal your first Pokemon. So you persuade her to go into a Pokemon battle with you and after you beat her up you get to choose one of her Pokemon that you can steal. She had a Spearow and a Pidgey and my favorite of the two is Spearow so I will be going with Spiro in this one. I name him ACO. And with that flying type we can now fly so we fly to Mount Moon to do our first real mission. So why are we at Mount Moon? Well there have been some rumors that there are Pokemon fossils here and Team Rocket is of course out to steal those. Then while I went into the cave I actually lost to a bug catcher. My ace is super effective against this Pokemon but still I was not able to be this Weedle and Caterpie. Then eventually one of the grunts finds what he thinks is a fossil but the other grunts find out really quickly that it's actually a moonstone and they don't really care about it so we're gonna pick that thing up for ourselves. We then have another meetup with the squad and apparently every single Team Rocket member except for me and Ronnie got beaten up by some spiky haired kid and they're referring to Blue. So Blue waltzed into Mount Moon and he beat up every single Team Rocket member. Luckily me and Ronnie aren't that scared and we keep looking for the fossils. I then steal a Paris from a bug catcher which I named Pablo. We also steal a Nidoran female so that we can eventually maybe have a Nidoqueen. And we name her Ezio. We then find the scientist that we hired as Team Rocket to find the fossils for us. He also tells us that the spiky haired kid came around but he told him that he wasn't a trainer so he left him alone. Ronnie is now going back to Petrol to report that we have found the fossils. But as we try to go back to Petrol, we run into red. And of course red being red, he wants to fight us. And he already has a level 25 Charmeleon and he sweeps my entire team which is meant to happen. He then walks off and steals both of the fossils so our mission has been sabotaged by him. Ronnie comes back and he's super mad at me and the scientists for losing against this stupid kid and wasting our fossils. Petrol then comes along and he asks us if we have some more information about the trainer that beat us and that we have to go and report that to Giovanni. We then head back to the hideout where we meet 
meet up with Giovanni and Ariana. He says that it's absurd that all of his Team Rocket grunts got beaten up by some kids. He then asks us everything about the kid and I tell him that his name is Red and he says what a ridiculous name, which it kinda is. He then says that we really have to watch out for these kids because a War Turtle and a Termelian are some very strong Pokemon. Then one of Giovanni's minions walks in. You may know him as Blaine. To sum up their conversation, well Blaine is making Porygons for Giovanni's game corner so that he can give them away to trainers. But making Porygon is illegal and Blaine doesn't want to do it anymore and he says that he can hire Bill to do it. The reason why Blaine doesn't want to make these Porygons anymore is because he could lose his gym leader status. So Giovanni then sends us on a journey to find Bill and try and recruit him for this project. But first we have to go to the daycare which is another Team Rocket scheme because they steal all of the Pokemon from the trainers that bring them in. But that's not really the reason that we're here, it's because Archer has a package for us that we have to deliver to Bill to try and bribe him into coming to Team Rocket. Then we had to Nugget Bridge to beat up some trainers and steal their Pokemon. First I stole a Mankey and then my Nidoran evolved into a Nidorina and after that I got myself a Slowpoke which I named Toadster 3 because he's one of my mods and his favorite Pokemon is a Slowpoke. We then go to Bill's house and in the package there are rare candies, a shiny Magikarp and a ticket for the SSN as well as some money. He isn't really impressed with the offer because he says that he gets paid more at Sylph Co, but he's gonna take it anyway. But for him to accept, we have to become his little spy and tell him all about Team Rocket's schemes. So that's what we're going to do and Bill is now working for Team Rocket. We then head back to the Nugget Bridge to meet up with Blue in person for the first time. He then says that Team Rocket is bad and that he thought that he had all of them in Mount Moon, but he didn't, so he's going to challenge us. We start off the battle by beating up his Pidgey with my Slowpoke's water gun while getting hit with a few sand attacks as well. Next up is his Rattata, so I go with my Mankey and I low kick him a load of times until he eventually faints while we're all only left with 4 HP. Next up is Abra and that thing can't touch us at all because it only knows teleport so my slowpoke is easily able to take it out. Then we learn confusion which is going to make the fight against War Turtle a lot easier. He just kept on using Wither off for some reason and I was able to take him out with about 5 confusions. He then starts to cry and is very sad that he lost his battle because he's been losing to Red a bunch of times and he's sick of it. So he then runs off and we have to get back to the daycare. As we're back in the hideout, we find out that Runny has blown a hole into the house in Cerulean City and stolen the TM for Dig. We then go to the TV and we find out that Lance is on the case and that we are now being hunted as Team Rocket members, so we actually have to behave ourselves. If we steal a Pokemon, there will be a bounty on our head and at the end of the game, the higher the bounty, the worse your sentence is going to be. If you're actually going to be a nice guy and not steal any kind of a Pokemon, you will get rewarded with TMs and such from police officers, but we won't be doing that in this game at all, we will only be stealing Pokemon. We then get a new mission to go to Lieutenant Surge and meet up with him because he has ordered some steroids from Team Rocket to boost his Pokemon stats because he's a corrupt gym leader. And in trade for that, he gives us some rare Pokemon that he has stuffed on the SSN and we have to go and get those. But first, I steal myself a Pikachu, I name him Holio, and then I run through the cave to pick up a flashlight from an old guy there which serves as the flash TM. We then go to Lieutenant Surge's gym with Proton, he cuts down the tree and we have a good old talk with Lieutenant Surge. He just beat up some challengers and he's giving them some advice about training your Pokemon. Of course Surge, like you're not giving them any steroids. He then tells us that the Pokemon that we're here for aren't here, they're at the SSN, so we have to go and rob the SSN real quick. Then once we reach the SSN, we see that Lance is actually there talking to Steven Stone. They're talking about the well-being of the Kanto region and how Lance is everything under control, which is clearly a lie. They also talk about Professor Oak and how he's developed the Pokedex and also about the politics there which I really don't care about. So we're just gonna head to the captain and as we enter his room he catches us and he tells us that these are some illegal packages and that he has to beat us up for it. Apparently his name is Arab, I have no idea if that's actually confirmed in the real series as well but he starts off with a tentacle. So I start off with Pikachu and I'm able to get off two thunder shocks before we get taken out by a bubble beam. 
Then I switch in Toadster, who is able to take down the tentacle with two psychics. Next up is Diglett, so I switch into my Nidorina and I'm able to get off a double kick, but then we get taken out by a magnitude. So I switch in ACO to finish off the Diglett with a peck. Then Krabby comes out and I'm able to do a load of chip damage with my Mankey, but then we get taken out as well. So I then switch in Toadster, I'm able to tanky bubble and take it out with a psychic. And last up is a Scyther, so I switch into my Geodude and I'm able to finish that thing off with a rock throw. After the fight, I get to steal a Pokemon, I go with Scyther, and I name him Mantio. Luckily, Proton comes along with his coughing, he spits some poison gas in the captain's face, and he's now puking in the little trash can. We then make our getaway, he shows us the truck that we have to use to deliver the Pokemon with, and we have now completed another mission. We then get sent to the Team Rocket Tower to steal some Cubone skulls and meet up with Mr. Fuji. But at the first floor, we meet up with Blue once again. We have a little bit of a deep conversation with him and how he's actually here because his Radicate died because Red actually killed the Radicate. And it was actually Red's intention to kill the Radicate. He looked very angry and Blue couldn't get to the Poké Center in time. That's why his Radicate sadly passed away. He tells us about his backstory with Red a little bit and how they met up in Palatown and how he's always lost to Red in Pokemon battles and how much he actually hates him. He then says, I guess not all Team Rocket members are bad and he's going to help us to get to the top of the Pokemon Tower. While making my way up to the top of the tower, I steal myself a Ghastly and a name him Marco. We then go to the top of the tower, we meet Marowak's spirit, we beat it up and it says something different here. It says, your spirit is is not pure, you can't go upstairs, but we do it anyway. Then once we reach the top, we see that Mr. Fuji is there and we actually have to battle him. This is the only time I think you have to ever battle Mr. Fuji, so this is a very cool addition to the game. But of course he has a stacked team and he's very easily able to beat us up with his Marowak. So after that I grind up my Ghastly up to level 25 so that he evolved into Haunter. And then I went back to Mr. Fuji and this time I was able Able to take down his first Pokemon Marowak with my Hunter's Nightshade with only three of them. So next up is Lickitung and I switch into Mankey and try to go for a low kick but it barely does any damage because we're so low in level and we get taken out by a stomp. So I'm then switching Scyther, I know that False Swipe can't kill but it is our best attacking move at the moment so I just use three False Swipes before we get taken out. So I switch in Ezio, I'm able to take him down into red health but then he heals up and disables my double kick, I'm able to get him back back down into orange health but then Ezio goes down as well. So I switch in Pikachu, I'm able to get off a thunder shock but then we got taken out as well. Then I switch in Hunter and the Lickitung gets taken out by the poison damage. Next is Pikachu and it's able to hit us with a Thunderbolt and do a load of damage but luckily next turn it goes for double team so I'm able to finish it off with two Nightshades and a Shadow Sneak. Last is Ditto and this is of course a reference to when he worked on the Mewtwo project. So I was able to switch in my Slowpoke, put his to sleep while mine was asleep as well and then I just spammed Headbutt for the rest of the battle and I was able to win against Mr. Fuji. After the battle I steal his Lickitung and I name it Lickio. And then he tells us about his backstory with Giovanni and how Giovanni was one of the stakeholders in the Mewtwo project and how he had to create Mewtwo to keep Giovanni satisfied. Archer then comes along and he tells us, yeah, we all know that story. Don Gio, I got this covered. You can go back to the base and get some rest. And while I head downstairs, we have a little bit of a chat with Blue and he tells us that he's going to stay here to make sure his Radicate is going to rest peacefully. Then as we leave the tower, we have our first meeting with Professor Oak and he asks us if you've seen Mr. Fuji, but then as he sees that we're wearing a Team Rocket outfit, he's like, never mind, forget what I just asked. Then we head back to the game corner, but who's walking out? It's Red, and as we go in, we see that Giovanni is super mad at everyone and he's like, how can a little kid beat every single one in this hideout up by himself? He's very stressed that he's going to take on the Viridian City Gym, which is actually Giovanni. 
So he then asks us about our mission with Mr. Fuji and we tell him all about it. But then we also tell him about what Blue told us about Red, so everything that he came out of Pallet Town that Oak gave him that Charmander and now Giovanni knows everything about him. And then Giovanni tells us about the entire backstory with him and Oak and Blaine and Fuji and all of the other scientists. Back in the day there was a war in Kanto so it was Giovanni and his scientists basically against the whole entire government, which is actually the Elite Four. So I will now narrate the story of Giovanni. Kanto's war effort was going badly. It was now clear that we could not win by force alone. But there was one thing that Giovanni has that Lance doesn't have. The minds of the brightest scientists in all of Kanto. Ever since the start of the war, Oak had been leading a number of secret initiatives to capture and harness the power of one Pokemon. One so rare, most laymen thought it was just a legend. Legends don't win wars, Oak knew better. Once a word got back that Dr. Fuji had at least caught a hold of Mew, we knew there was no chance the public could know. Then at last, they managed to capture the Mew. But they couldn't even harness its power because the Mew wouldn't even attack a stupid Magikarp. It was too friendly to use as a weapon. But Oak had an amazing idea. He called it the Mewtwo project. He was going to clone Mew and he had to make sure that that Pokemon had its power but that it also had the ability to destroy the entire region. But to do that they needed the help of Giovanni, the richest member of the Elite Four. Once they got the funding, they started working on it, but the project went wrong multiple times cloning Pokemon that they now call Ditto. They were kind of like purple blobs and they were able to transform into any Pokemon. But then one day they were able to create a clone that they now call the Disaster. It didn't look like a Ditto and it didn't act like one. It was very vicious and it managed to escape and kill all of the Dittos inside of the mansion. They then thought that it was all over and that all of their experiments were for nothing. But Dr. Fuji came along with one of the best ideas ever. He wanted to clone the Pokemon to get together with human DNA. So all of the scientists entered their DNA into the capsule together with the Mew DNA. And that is when Mewtwo was created. At first it listened to the scientists because it didn't know that it was going to be used for war yet but eventually it found out so they had to make an armor for it so that he could fight the strongest of Pokemon. Eventually he broke out of the armor, he burned down the mansion and he fled to Cerulean Cave where to this day Mewtwo is still hiding. Then after Mewtwo escaped the war was all over. The scientists surrendered together with Giovanni and Oak's punishment is that he could never ever participate in another Pokemon battle again. And Giovanni, he got kicked out of the Elite Four and had to become a gym leader. And that's why he wants revenge on Lance. We then go back to the future and we find out that Silver is actually Ariana's and Giovanni's son. I didn't even know that Ariana was the mother of Silver, but it kinda makes sense with the red hair. After that, he tells Ariana to go to the gym and guard it, and he promotes me to Rocket Admin, so I get this cool new outfit and I can now steal Pokemon from different Pokemon trainers as well, and he tells us that our new mission is to interrogate Professor Oak back in Pallet Town. Then go to his lab, but apparently he isn't home, so I leave again, but as I try to leave Pallet Town, we see that Agatha, is running by. She then tells us that she is very surprised to see a Team Rocket member in a peaceful town like Pallet. She then tells us that we're probably looking for Professor Oak and that we have more in common than we think. So she invites us inside to have some tea. We go inside and she then tells us that she's the grandmother of Blue and of Daisy here. She then tells us that the father of Blue and Daisy, so her children, had died in an accident. It was all the war's fault and Lance's fault and she and Oak promised to avenge her son and his wife. But when it all came down to it, Oak surrendered and that's why she is so mad at Oak because she basically left them hanging, left them in the dust. She then apologizes to her daughter for bringing all of this up and then leaves and then Ronnie comes 
Jason. We haven't seen him for a while. And he tells us that we have to leave this tea party and go to Professor Oak's lab. But Daisy gets mad and he's like, I knew I couldn't trust you. And then she battles us. She starts off with her Chansey. So I lead off with Nidorina and I'm able to double kick it once and it's taken out. Next up is Ponyta. So I switch in my Slowpoke. I'm able to bring it down into red health. Then she heals up. I'm able to hit one more water gun, but then we get taken out. Then I switch in Ezio, who is able to take down the Ponyta with a single double kick. She also had a Nidorina, which she sent out after that, and I was able to take out her Nidorina with only one HP remaining because we got the flinch lock. Next was Raichu, so I switch in my Geodude, who is able to take that thing down with two magnitudes because it really couldn't touch us. After the fight, we again get the option to steal a Pokemon, and I'm gonna go with Raichu because it's going to be a very good team member if we get it. I name it Dio and I will be adding him to the team later on. After that, Ronnie throws out his Raticate and he straight up attacks Daisy with Hyper Fang. Dang, this dude is absolutely reckless. He then heads off and tells that he's going to report back to Giovanni. We then head back to the hideout and we see that Ronnie he's talking to Giovanni about the mission. But Giovanni tells him that he shouldn't even have gone with me and that he's very disappointed in him and that he really wants to fire him but he is going to give him one more chance. He gets sent out and Giovanni asks us to come up. He tells us that he's going to set up another team to fight Professor Oak and that he has a new mission for us and that is to beat up Blaine because he has to come back to Team Rocket and make some more Porygons. So we go back to the mansion and we find a letter that is on the table over there that is from Professor Oak. Oak himself. It states that Professor Oak is very very disappointed in Blaine because he has found out that he's working with Team Rocket. But he says that as a friend he has no need to taint his near flawless gym leader and scientific reputations. And says he will do it if they do not meet up very very shortly. We then find Blaine and he's like, ah Giovanni's pet, I knew you would come at last prepare for a beating. And the beating is exactly what I got. I got beaten up by a second Pokemon Ponyta because my team is pretty damn under level till this point in the game. So after the battle I beat up a swimmer and I got myself a Seedra which I named Julio and he's going to be very good against Blaine. He starts off with a Growlithe while I start off with my Nidorina and of course we get wrecked by Flamethrower and Flame Blurst. So then I switch in Julio who is able to take down the Growlithe with a single bubble beam. And next up is Ponyta. For Ponyta I stayed in with my Julio and I'm able to take that thing down with two bubble beams. Next up is Rapidash and I'm able to avoid two of its infernos and kill it with two bubble beams. Next up is Arcanine and I'm able to hit it with one bubble beam but two extreme speeds are too much for my Seedra. So I then switch in Slowpoke, I'm able to hit a Surf, get him into red health but then he heals up, I get one more Surf off and then we're dead to an extreme speed. So I then switch in Raichu and finish this battle off with two Thunderbolts. After the battle he's like yeah I know I believe in Team Rocket but I'm not some petty criminal I'm a gym leader I can't be doing this all for revenge I have to make my standards. And then he's like Oak has been blackmailing me I'm very scared but Giovanni's threatening me as well so he begs me to try and give me a second chance with Giovanni and he's like I don't mind becoming another corrupt gym leader there are so many corrupt gym leaders already i want to work with you guys again he then leaves the key to his gym on this table because he doesn't want to fight red or blue at the moment we then get a call from giovanni who tells us that we should go to Silphco and meet up with all of the team rocket members over there because we're going to take it over and try to steal the master ball because he wants the master ball to try and go and catch mewtwo once we reach the top of the tower we see that professor oak is there for some reason he then tells us that he is very disappointed in us and that we're taking over this building and it's not good blah de blah de blah and then he teleports away. As we reach the president we see that Bill is there as well and he has the same plan as Giovanni so he's trying to acquire the master ball to try and mass produce it himself and of course acquire Mewtwo with it. He then tells us that we were too slow and that we have to leave the building but we aren't going to leave so we have to battle Bill here. But our first attempt didn't go that smoothly because his team is around level 45 so he absolutely wrecked my team since I'm like 10 levels below his. After losing to him about a dozen times I eventually got myself the run that I needed to defeat him. I start off with Raichu because I knew that he starts off with Porygon and I'm easily able to take that thing down with two Thunderbolts. Next up is Lapras so I switch in Ezio to do a load of chip damage with some double kicks. I'm able to hit 
hit 3 before we get taken out by an Ice Beam, so I switch in Dio, who is able to finish off the Lapras with the Thunderbolt. Next is Dragonair, so I go into Julio, I hit a Dragon Breath, but then we get switched out by a Dragon Tail and go into Haunter. I then go for a Nightshade and we then get taken out, so I switch in Dio, who is able to get the Dragonair into 1 HP range, but then she heals up with a Hyper Potion, I'm able to hit a few more Thunderbolts. But I switch in Lickitung to take the hit so that we can safely go into Seedra after that. I was able to hit a stomp and then we got taken out by a slam. So I switch in Julio, I'm able to hit a Dragon Breath and Paralyze, but then we get taken out by a Dragon Tail. So I switch in Slowpoke, who's able to finish off the Dragonair with a Psychic. Next is Kangaskhan, so I stay in with Toadster, who is able to hit a Zen Headbutt, but then we get taken out by two knockoffs. So I switch in my Raichu as my final hope. And we get a critical hit on the Kangaskhan to take it out with a Thunderbolt and Last up is his Pinsir. Our first Thunderbolt does a load of damage and paralyzes him as well. He gets then stuck in paralysis and my next Thunderbolt takes out the Pinsir. I then scare away Bill, go to talk to the president of Silvco. He's like trying to bribe me with money and stuff, but luckily Giovanni comes in and he's like, I got the situation covered. You go and get yourself some well-deserved rest. But before we go, he promotes us to Team Rocket Executive, the highest rank he can have except for boss and with that he also gives us a crowbar so we can now open locked doors. We then get a call from Bill and he's like come over to the lab at Cinnabar Island and once we arrive there we see that Blaine and Mr. Fuji are there with him. He wants to create his own master ball to try and capture Mewtwo but for that we need a few things. He needs us to get an Apricorn that he planted down at Viridian Forest and also a Pokeball chip that we can find at the Team Rocket hideout. So once we arrive in Viridian Forest, we meet up with Silver, the son of Giovanni. Of course, like always, he has to trash talk his father and me a lot and then runs off. So we get the purple apricorn and then we go back to the Team Rocket hideout where Giovanni and all of the other admins and grunts are gathered. As it turns out, Red went to Silvco to stop Giovanni from getting the Master Ball and he beat up Giovanni and all of the Team Rocket grunts and got the Master Ball for him. Himself. And Ronnie speaks up and he's like, next time we'll get him boss, we'll get the little kid, I betcha. And this is where Giovanni loses it, he's like, you're the person that has been sabotaging all of our plans, I want you out of Team Rocket, I never want to see you again, you're so dumb. He throws out his Nidoking, he's ready to attack, and then Ronnie finally leaves Team Rocket. And while I was playing through this game, I actually thought that Ronnie might be a spy, but we'll have to see what happens further on. He says that it all doesn't matter, they're gonna go to Viridian Gym and stock up over there because Red has to eventually beat the 8th Gym and they're going to try and take him down over there. So they relocate over there, my Slowpoke evolved into a Slowbro and then I got myself the Poke Chip. I then bring the Poke Chip to Bill and they are able to create their own Master Ball. And with this Master Ball, they don't want to go after Mewtwo, they want to go after the Catastrophe. Remember that experiment that killed all the Dittos earlier on in the run? Yeah, they want to try and capture that because apparently it's even stronger than Mewtwo. But there is only one scientist that knows where it is, and that is one of the scientists that has been missing for 10 years and you've never heard about in this game before. And this scientist's name is Shigeki. But we have no idea where he is and the only way that we can find Shigeki is if we challenge Mewtwo to a battle so that he can tell us where Shigeki is because he has a mental link with all of the five scientists because their DNA is in his body. So he's the only one that knows where Shigeki is hiding. Bill then sends us on our way to Cerulean Cave where we have to battle Mewtwo but we can't use our Master Ball on him. So we travel to Cerulean Cave and at the end of the cave we of course find Mewtwo. But he tells us that he isn't threatened by our Master Ball because he could kill us even before we throw it, so the only thing that he really wants is a Pokemon battle. And if we win, if we give him a good challenge, he will tell us where Shigeki is hiding. And this thing is level 70, we have to take down a level 70 Mewtwo with level 45-ish Pokemon. Luckily my Raichu was able to Thunderbolt him, 
and paralyze him as well which is going to help our entire team against him. Raichu alone was able to get him down into orange health before we got taken out by a single psychic. So then I switched in Marco, I went for a curse so that it would take him out eventually no matter what, but he just kept on using bad moves and then a nightshade and the curse damage was able to take down the Mewtwo. After the battle Mewtwo is like yes you've given me a good challenge, now I will tell you where Shigeki is hiding. And apparently he has been hiding in plain sight for all this time. You remember that guy that teaches you how to capture Pokemon at the beginning of the game? Yeah, that guy. Apparently, that's Shigeki. The only man on the planet that knows where the catastrophe is. So then Mewtwo sends us away because he wants to fight another trainer that is more pure of heart so that he can actually travel with him. And then we head to Viridian City. So we then reach Viridian City and we go and talk to the old man. And he's like, you need some help to catch a Pokemon, but we tell him why we're really here. He's like, yes, my name is Shigeki, but I haven't been called Shigeki for tens of thousands of years. We then go inside and he wants to tell us everything, but we have to promise that we don't give away his whereabouts to anybody else. So he then tells us about the failed Mewtwo project and how he actually came up with the Porygon project, so he's the creator of the Porygon. Because Porygon is a Pokemon that is programmed to work for its owner, and that's what they wanted into the final project with Mewtwo. And then he tells us about the catastrophe and how he actually glitched the entire world around him so actual pieces of the earth started to moving around and it was really really dangerous and that's why he was able to escape. But luckily while he escaped he had a special machine that could contain him once he escaped so he didn't get far. Once everybody asked him where the Pokemon actually was he told them that he didn't know where he was. But deep inside he did know where he hid him. And he then tells us that he was too scared to tell anyone and that the catastrophe was actually hiding under their noses all this time. He had been frozen in a block of ice down at Cinnabar Island. And he's very afraid that one day he will just escape from his ice prison, but to this day he's still trapped under Cinnabar Island. He's like nobody should ever be able to see him again because he's an uncontrollable monster but that's when we tell him that we have a master ball so that we can contain it forever. And that's when he's going up to his TV to unlock this icy cage and free the catastrophe so that we will be able to capture it after this dialogue. So he frees it, we fly to Cinnabar Island and as you can see everything is glitched up, everything is out of place it's not looking too great so we go to the spot where you have to encounter him next to Cinnabar Island and as we serve there we find out that it's actually missing no the glitch Pokemon from generation 1 we go ahead and chuck our master ball at it and name it plot twist but technically we can't use this thing in battle but we have to capture it because otherwise you can't progress in the story after that Bill and Professor Fuji come up to us and they're like finally you've captured it you've saved us all from missing no I was getting really scared when the island started shaping up but you did it but Bill then tells us that we have to try and get to the top of Team Rocket beat the Elite Four do anything we want with this Pokemon and that Blaine is currently challenging Blue down at his gym then Mr. Fuji leaves and Blaine and Blue come out of the gym and they're like what was all this commotion about was there a legendary Pokemon or or something so we go ahead and show blue and blaine missing no and blue's like i have seen this pokemon before but that is not possible because it has been under the ice for 10 years so bill and blaine ask how how have you seen this pokemon and blue's like down at the secret lab from Professor Oak where he used to do all of these experiments on Pokemon. And then it all comes together. Professor Oak had been working on so many projects down at his secret lab that nobody knows about. And Blaine and Bill are very scared for what's about to happen next. So they tell us that we should go to Professor Oak's lab and try and find that secret underground lab of his. But before we go there, we have to take a look at Missigno himself because this is very interesting. He has the bird and mystery typing. He then has a move called Super Glitch. It's an amazing Pokemon, really. So then we go to Professor Oak's lab. We find a bookcase and we talk to a book which opens up a secret stairway to the underground lab. 
We then go down into that lab and here is where it all comes together, the whole storyline. We find that there's Mewtwo statues, various things on the floor, but once we run past a PC, there is a little audio log that plays. And here you can see the entire backstory of Professor Oak, which is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a Pokemon ROM hack. In the first audio log, he talks about missing No and the failed Mewtwo project and how he knew that it was going to fail and that he has to have a backup plan. Next up, he talks about Mewtwo and how it has a load of potential, but, but everything is irrelevant because you can't use it because it's impossible to control a Pokemon. Pokemon. In the next one, it's starting to get very interesting because here he talks about how Pokemon can only be as strong as their trainers. And then the next audio log, he is talking about creating a genetic clone of a human boy. A human being that is built and created only to win Pokemon battles. One that he can control at his will. A trainer that only lives for Pokemon battles, that really pushes everything to the limit, just by the click of a button. Then next he talks about that he can't create a living boy of battling age. And to create an actual serving human being, he's going to create his own embryo and let nature take its way. So he found a woman that can't get any babies, so she would be blindly devoted to raise this child with love and everything that he needs. And he will be his father figure, so he would do anything what Oak tells him to do. Then next we had to fight one of the statues and we stole a tentacruel from him before we could see the next audio log. Then next he talks about the Pokemon League and how it's a big challenge for young trainers, but then he says that it can easily be exploited. And then he tells us that once his clone has gotten his Pokemon license, he will jump up in the ranks, gym leaders, criminal organizations, legendary Pokemon will be no match against his clone. Then next he talks about how Mewtwo has escaped and that Kanto's war supplies are running out so we can't run this war any longer. And then we find out that Oak was actually the champion so he surrendered so that they would let him live in peace. But once the time is there, his clone will rise up and beat Lance so that he can gain control of the Kanto region once again. And of course, this clone is Red. With this cruel backstory out of the way, we go to Viridian City and we see that Red has just beaten the gym. He pushes us to the side and then we run into Giovanni. And then he tells us that he has been defeated in battle for the last time, that he cannot face his Team Rocket members like this ever again. So he disbands Team Rocket there and then, but he knows that his admins and executives aren't going to take this lightly. So he makes me the boss of Team Rocket so that we can keep his legacy going. He then tells us that he has seen the light and that he knows that he can't reach his ultimate goal like this. So he gives us a briefcase with money and finally makes us the boss of Team Rocket. Then Silver runs out and he of course he has to say it's all your fault that everything is going bad and he runs after him. We then check the briefcase and we see that there's a letter in there with the last wish of Giovanni in it. He wants us to take down the Elite Four and wipe Lance's smirk off his face. And after we do that, he wants us to disband the organization for good. So we go up to the start of the Pokemon League, but Lance is there already and he tells us that he's already been beaten by some spiky haired kid named Blue. And it is here where we have to fight Lance to teach him some manners. Well, since he starts off with Gyarados, I'm easily able to one-shot that thing with my Raichu's Thunderbolt. Next up is Aerodactyl, so I switch in Slowbro and I'm able to hit a Surf to half of his health, but then we get taken out, so I switch in my Tentacruel, who is able to finish off the Aerodactyl with a Water Pulse. Next up is Dragonair, so I switch in Muck, which I got by stealing him from one of the guards down at Professor Oak's lab. And he was able to take down the Dragonair with two Sludge Bombs and a Poison Champ. Next up is his Dragonite, so I switch in Hunter and I go for a Curse, and I'm also able to hit a Nightshade before we go down, so then I switch in Ezio. We then are able to poison the Dragonite as well before my Nidorina got taken out, so I switch in Raichu and the Curse damage actually takes out the Dragonite. And last up is his Kingdra, and after Dio was able to spam a load of Thunderbolts, we were able to finish off Lance. After the battle, we're able to steal his Dragonite and we name it Dragonio. After 
after that, we beat up some guards. Since we don't have any gym badges, we actually have to beat all of the guards in the Pokemon battles. And I got myself a Machamp, which I named Chadio, a Rhydon, which I named Horneo, and a bunch of other Pokemon that will be very useful once I reach the Pokemon League. Then once we reach the Pokemon League, we meet up with this green-haired guy, and apparently it's Ronnie. He's talking about how life is very bad without Team Rocket, and that he's very happy that we got promoted to boss, and this and that. But then he talks about how Lance got defeated and then the TV screen pops up and shows us that Blue is actually the new champion. They ask Blue a bunch of questions about the economy and stuff and the answer that he has is that there will be peace. But yeah, he's a kid, he's 10 years old, he can't lead the Kanto region. And he also wants people to be able to ride bikes indoors which is definitely something that we need in the Kanto region. Then goes into the Hall of Fame room and it cuts back to us and Professor Oak walks in and he's like, Blue, it's impossible, how did he actually beat the entire Pokemon League. So then Bill comes along and he tells us that we have to break into the Elite Four and we can only do that with Ronnie's help. So we go and talk to Ronnie, he comes with us, he gets his Raticate out and attacks the guard. So then we cannot go into the Pokemon League without missing now. So that is very sad because I didn't want to use it, but you have to have it on your team if you want to enter the Elite Four in this game. Then as we enter, we see that all of the Elite Four members have already gotten their Pokemon beaten up by Red and they warn us that he's super strong and that we're probably not going to be able to take him down. Eventually we reach Lance and he's like, if my Pokemon were still alive I would give you a beating. Yeah, not happening Lance. And he's like, how did I get beaten twice by some stupid little kids? But then he realizes it's not his problem anymore because he's not a champion anymore so he just lets us pass. Then as we reach the champion room, we see that Oak is already there. And he then does his usual speech about Oh Red, you've come such a long way with your Charmander since you left Ballot Town. Congratulations and Blue, I'm so disappointed in you. You were the champion and you already gave it away before I got here. You didn't treat your Pokemon with love and respect. And then they enter the Hall of Fame. And then Blue freaks out, he's like, I treated my Pokemon with respect and love, I did everything right. I thought that if I was a champion, you would at least stop and say you were proud of me. And then Bill enters the room and he's like, it's actually through, the kid really did it. And then he's like, I wish we could solve this in private, but we do have a backup plan. We're going to take on Oak. Then of course a stupid press arrives and they have to have a talk with Red and Oak. And he's like, I know all of you have some mixed feelings for me standing here again because I was a champion before and I got kicked out. But Red has a disability, he can't talk to any people, so I will be his consultant. I will be telling him what to do, of course, when he agrees. So that Professor Oak can basically get the power that he wants back again. First thing that Oak wants to do is bring down all of the criminals, so all of the corrupt gym leaders and Team Rocket, dead or alive. He then wants to contain all of the legendary Pokemon so that they can't fall into the wrong hands or escape their habitats. And the last thing that he wants is of course that Lance gets put into jail because he had been a terrible champion for Kanto. He then asks Red if he agrees with all this and just before he can say yes, Dr. Fuji and Blaine walk in. And they then tell everyone, even the press there, that Red isn't a real boy and that Oak created him to do his bidding. Of course, Oak denies all this and he's like, you trigger his anxiety, we have to bring him to a solitary place so they enter the Hall of Fame room again. And then Agatha speaks up and she's like, is it really through? Does he really just want to take over Kanto again? And her love sparks bright again and she wants to contain everybody so that Oak can do all of his bad shenanigans. So she releases her Pokemon and they keep everything in place but luckily we have the Sylph scope so that we can see the ghosts and go up to Agatha to battle them. She starts off with her Gengar and I start off with my Raichu and I'm able to two shot it with Thunderbolt. Next up is Arbok and that thing is able to hit a Mud Bomb but still two Thunderbolts is able to take him out as well. Crobat then comes out and that thing is able to take me out with a Poison Fang so I switch in Alakazam. 
I'm able to hit two psychics and take out the crowbat. Next is Gengar and I'm able to outspeed and hit a psychic but it's left with 2 HP and it then takes me out with a shadow ball. So I then switch in Dragonite who is able to finish off the Gengar with an Aqua Tail. And last up is Misdreavus. Luckily Dragonite's attack is through the roof so we're able to two shot it with two Dragon Claws. After that she lets us pass but warns us that Professor Oak is a very very strong trainer. So then we head into the Hall of Fame room and meet up with Oak and Red. And he then gets mad at me. This is the first time you actually see Professor Oak mad. And he's like you slipped through every crack and you're about to ruin everything I've worked Worked for. But he then says that it doesn't matter because Red is as human as anybody else and that the region has bound to follow his commands. Nobody will ever be able to take him down, that's what he says from the moment that he created him. He then tells us that the surrendering was the hardest thing he has ever done in his life. Then he's like, people in war will fight till they're dead but when it's peace they will literally surrender after a Pokemon battle. So, so if you control the strongest trainer, in the same way, you're actually the strongest human being. He then tells us that he's not afraid of telling me this because in court, we all know who would win against a criminal or the professor himself. He basically just pulls the right strings to get what he really wants. He then talks about Sylph Ko and how Red got his hands on the Master Ball and how he had to silence some scientists and that everything can still go to his plan if he keeps his emotions intact and that Red is actually the role model in this because he has has no emotions. And then he says it. He's just a puppet. He's made to be controlled and that's when I thought that is true because when you play a Pokemon game you control the character it has no will of its own and in this game that's no different because Red gets controlled by Professor Oak. He then tells Red to attack us into a Pokemon battle and we're going to see if we can beat him up. He starts off with his lovely Charizard and I start off with my Raichu and I'm able to take down the Charizard with just two Thunderbolts. Next up is Pikachu, so I switch into my Machamp and I'm able to cross chop him for a one shot as well. He then has an Alkazam which gets two shot by my Dragonite's Dragon Claw. He then has his own Dragonite and I am able to take that thing down with two Dragon Claws as well because he just went for a safeguard. Next up is Snorlax, so I stayed in because my Machamp is paralyzed and wouldn't be able to outspeed him. So I hit two Dragon Claws which got him down into orange health but then we get taken out by a Crunch. Then I switch in Dio to finish it off with a Thunderbolt and last up is his Lapras. So I stay in with Dio, hit it with a Thunderbolt, it only does about half health and then we get taken out by a Hydro Pump. So I switch in Alakazam, I go for a Psychic, it doesn't take it out so she heals up with a full restore and then I just spam Psychic for 3 more turns to take down the Lapras and defeat Red right in front of Oak's eyes. And of course after the battle we get to steal another Pokemon and we go ahead and steal his Charizard even though we're not going to be able to use him anymore. And then after the battle he's like no I can't let this happen, how did you defeat Red you worthless kid, let me handle this, step out of the way. But at that moment Agatha walks in and she apologizes for letting me in and also apologizes for being so harsh on him for the last 10 years because she thought that he had gone soft. And after she's done apologizing and explaining everything, Oak gets super mad. He's like, you drop me when I'm at my worst and now you want me when I'm at my best. I don't want you in my life anymore. And that's actually good life advice over there. Remember kids. He's like, I never want to see you again. I don't respect you anymore. You know nothing about respect. So he throws out his Tauros and he attacks Agatha with it. And as you can see from all of the ketchup on the screen, yeah, Agatha is pretty much dead. And after that he's like, you criminal come up here so that I can beat your ass in a Pokemon battle. But luckily Bill walks in just at the right moment and he's like, what is happening here? And luckily he healed my Pokemon so that I could take on Professor Oak with a fully healed team. That mocks Oak for me defeating Red. Then he says, I wonder what went wrong in designing him. But then Oak goes, he's still your champion. It doesn't matter. He won't take this lightly. And then Bill goes like, yeah, eventually he will get defeated for real by Don Geo if he just runs through the Elite Four normally. Then he says, you forget that I am undefeated in battle unlike Lance and 
red. So now he will take me on as his final challenge so that he can give me my punishment. And he starts off with his Toro. So the first thing that I did was I got rid of my Mystic Noah. So I just let him die by the Toros and then I switched in my Machamp. I was able to hit a Cross Chop but then a Zen Headbutt took out my Chadio. So then I switched in Alakazam. I went for a Psychic and took him out but we also got hit with a Zen Headbutt which left me with 12 HP. Next is Executor, so I switch in my Tentacruel and I'm able to hit a few Poison Chaps and get him down into red health, but then we get taken out, so I switch in Dragonite and take down the Executor with a Dragon Claw. Next is Gyarados, so I switch in Raichu to take that thing down with a single Thunderbolt. Next up is Arcanine, so I switch in my Alakazam to take the Intimidate, and then we got taken out by an Extreme Speed, so I switch in my Dragonite, and luckily his Extreme Speed doesn't do that much damage, and I'm able to take him out with two Aqua Tails. Next is Jolteon, so I switch into my right shoe, but I go for a Thunderbolt and it has Volt Absorb, so I opt to go for a different strategy and just hit it with a load of Tail Whips. Luckily, I was able to set up six Tail Whips on him because he just kept on using Wish. There must be some fault in this AI. And then eventually, I was able to take down the Jolteon with two quick attacks. Next is Venusaur, but sadly enough, that thing took my right shoe down with a single pedal dance. So then I switched in Dragonite. I was able to hit two Dragon Claws. It then got confused, it hit itself in its confusion, if it didn't hit itself we would have lost but my last Dragon Claw won us the battle against Professor Oak. After that we just steal his Venusaur and then he goes crazy. He then goes on to talk about how Team Rocket is insignificant, they're all very weak and that I somehow am way too strong and that I'm not from Team Rocket and then he says you're not from Team Rocket, you're A. But as he's about to end his sentence and tell us who we really are, the police barge in with Lance. He accuses Oak of using Pokemon in battle which he's not allowed to do and also of manslaughter and then he says to Red that he's going to be tested to see if he's really not a human being. And then Oak is like, no you're going against your champion's wishes. He says to Red that he has to send out his Pokemon to save him. So that's exactly what he does. And then he goes up to the computer and he's going to try and change the world but luckily Missing No comes out of its Pokeball and he glitches everything out of place so that Oak can't use it anymore and he also kills all of Red's Pokemon. And then Lance and his officers grab Professor Oak and he also tells them to grab me because we're a criminal as well even though Ronnie defends us by saying that we have cleared all of this and because of me the world is actually saved but despite that Lance still picks us up and throws us into jail. We then save the game and I thought it was over but there's still this courtroom which is a very cool feature in my opinion. The first accused is Red and of course the judge now knows that he is not actually a human being. So he takes away his champion role and he gives it back to Blue and Blue is like no I'm too young for this I know that I just did this for Professor Oak's love but he doesn't need that anymore and he's going to focus on Pokemon research so he gives the champion role back to Lance. The next of the accused is Professor Oak and he gets accused for manslaughter, plotting against the government and using his Pokemon in battle when he clearly couldn't do that anymore. But once they go ahead and check the lab it was apparently empty so the charges for the lab have been dropped. Then for the manslaughter no eyewitness has actually come forth and said that Professor Oak has done it so she must have died in a Pokemon battle. So those charges are dropped as well but of course he he did use his Pokemon in battle so he gets accused of that and his punishment is that his research will not be funded anymore and that he is now banished from the Kanto region. And then of course last of the accused is me. Don Gio. You get accused of thousands of Pokemon thefts. You also get accused of violent intimidation, complicity in Pokemon smuggling and violence towards women, threatening and attacking a police officer. And there is now a bounty on my head of 156,000 Poke Dollars. So we have to pay this back somehow and we also get sentenced to 23 years in prison. But it isn't done here, there is still a little little cutscene and we see Bill down in Professor Oak's lab talking to someone. He's then talking about the blueprints and how they could recreate all of his projects in just three years time. And then he sees, well there you are, come and see for yourself and Professor 
Elm walks in. So that means that they're going to create another one of these trainers and it has got to be gold. So does that mean that there will be a second installment in this series? I certainly hope so. This was honestly the best ROM hack story-wise that I've ever played. Just because one way or another it kind of makes sense because it links into the normal Fire Red storyline but just a lot darker and I really really love it. I know this was kind of a different video, not really that much battling, more story-wise and I hope you guys really enjoyed it because this was probably one of my favorite videos to make. So if you want to see more of these story breakdown videos of ROM hacks and stuff, definitely Definitely leave a comment down below. I will also leave a link to the ROM hack in the description if you want to play it yourself, but really don't speed through it, read all of the dialogue, it's really interesting. This is probably the longest video ever, but I hope you still enjoyed it. And of course, I want to thank my member and Patreon supporters, Ben Atrill, Felipe Morla, and Kenzie Bunk. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.